Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up, off-season drama. Jumbo Visma say they've signed Kian Brooks. Kian Brooks says he's signed for Jumbo Visma, but Bora Hansgrohe say he'll remain with them through to the end of 2024 as per his contract. Meanwhile, Cedric Vasseur calls for Richard Plugger to resign, and Patrick Lefebvre says that Ralph Denk is getting a taste of his own medicine. It's all been kicking off. I'll be trying to make sense of all of that, as well as wrapping up this weekend's cyclocross action and all the other racing news as well. This week in the world of racing, we learnt that Nairo Quintana is back. Of course, we already knew that he'd been signed by Movistar, but at the weekend, we got our first glimpse of him back in the dark blue kit and training with the team. We also learnt that you're never too young to experience the perils of a muddy cyclocross course. It's a good dad. Just, you know what? Come on, sock off, <laughs> put it back in. Well saved by the dad there, I thought. Uh, we also learned that there are some changes going on with bike suppliers next year. Along with Aji Desire moving from BMC to Van Rijssel, uh, Villiers have replaced Lapierre at Groupama FDJ. Uh, that marks the end of a 22-year relationship between the two, and also means that Villiers will join Specialized and Canyon in having two World Tour teams in 2024. Meanwhile, NV will make their first full bike appearance in World Tour races as they replace Specialized at Total Energy. And there are a couple of kit supplier changes as well. Ineos Grenadiers, who've been with Bio Racer for the past couple of years, are going to be with Gobic from next season, although we weren't supposed to know that just yet. Egan Bernal accidentally revealed the news in a picture he posted to his Instagram stories. And finally, we learned that Kian Altibrooks is making a controversial move to Jumbo Visma, or Visma Lisa Bike, as they will be known next year. Uh, this all kicked off on Saturday afternoon, and I completely missed it as it was unfolding, so I'll bring you up to speed in the same way that I brought myself up to speed yesterday morning. Uh, first up, though, some background context. Uchibruk's signature was highly sought after as a first-year junior, when some people were already claiming he was the next Remco Evenepoel. The team that got him to sign on the dotted line was Bora Hansger. That contract was signed in 2020, with Uchibruk's due to turn pro with the team on the 1st of January 2022, straight out of the junior ranks. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, initially, all was rosy. Uchi Brooks was allowed to slowly develop on a non-Belgian team, one which would allow him to avoid some of the pressure that would inevitably come as a talented young Belgian riding for a Belgian team. Uh, towards the end of his first year with Bora, he became the youngest ever winner of the Tour de l'Avenir, and everything looked great for both the rider and for the team. However, the first signs of a strained relationship came at this year's Vuelta España. Uh, towards the end of the race, Uchi Brooks expressed his frustration at the way that teammate Alexander Vlasov was riding, claiming he was more interested in beating him than riding for the greater good of the team. Further frustration came at the Corona de Nation time trial at the end of the season. Uh, speaking to Het Newsblad there, he told of his shift to coming loose on his first bike and his spare bike being completely out of order. In between those two instances, there had already been some rumours circulating that Oichi Brooks could be changing team with immediate effect. The unlikely destination of Groupama FDJ was mooted for a few days, whilst other reports suggested that Ineos Grenadiers were the front runners in the race to sign him. But then all went quiet until Saturday. Seemingly out of the blue, Jumbo Visma released a statement to say that Alti Brooks would join their team on the 1st of January 2024 on a four-year contract. Uh, that would see him there until at least the end of 2027. General Manager Richard Plugger was quick to chime in himself, saying, Proud to announce the incoming transfer of this big talent and nice guy. Welcome, Kian. Now, this all took the cycling internet by storm, mainly because everybody was desperate for a bit of drama. We've been starved of any since the Jumbo Quickstep merger got canned. And drama we got, because an hour and a half after Jumbo Bisma released their statement, Bora Hansgrohe tweeted this. Kian is, and will remain, a member of Bora Hansgrohe, also in the coming 2024 season. He is contractually bound with us until the 31st of December 2024. At which point, cycling fans around the world single-handedly created a shortage of the world's popcorn supply, as we all sat back to see what shots were going to be fired next. 
And that shot came from Ute Brook's agents, who sent a statement to GCN, which they later published on Instagram, effectively saying that the agreement between Ute Brooks and Bora Hansgrohe was terminated on the 1st of December of this year, that legal proceedings are already being initiated by Ute Brooks, and that the UCI is aware of the agreement. And they finished it off by saying that Ute Brooks is very much looking forward to starting with Team Visma Lisa Bike next year. Which begs the question, what happened that enabled Ute Brooks to terminate his contract with Bora Hansgrohe? Because you can't just terminate a contract for the sole reason that you want to leave and move to another team. That's a question that we still don't have the answer to. And even as I record this, there are two teams who claim that they will have Ute Brooks racing for them next season. Uh, the UCI have yet to say anything on the matter, but there have been others who've had their say. Patrick Lefebvre probably upset that there was some cycling drama going on that didn't involve him, decided to chime in himself on Sunday morning. Uh, deciphering what he was saying in that tweet was not particularly easy, but essentially he was pointing out that Bora manager Ralph Denk had broken a verbal agreement the two of them had a couple of years ago, and so he's in no position to be upset about what's happening now. Meanwhile, Cedric Vasseur, Team Cofidis general manager, was busy slating Richard Plugger, saying that he should respect the rules and resign from his role as AIGCP president immediately, signing off with the words, get out. Fair to say, there's no love lost between those two. Jaco Alula manager Brent Copeland gave some more objective observations, saying, I asked myself how something like this can even possibly happen in our day and age and at the level of our sport, and yet we find ourselves facing something like this. Is it greed, desperation, or simply not conscious of the athlete's future, who is the actual person who unfortunately pays the consequences of an unfortunate issue? Embarrassing is an understatement. And that's not the end of it. Chris Froome wanted his slice of the pie as well. Uh, good to have at Kian Alchie Brooks join us on the team ride today. Alchie Brooks could be seen at the back of the photo in a Bora Hansgrohe helmet, plain black jersey and Jumbo Visma shorts. Ironically, Bora Hansgrohe's own website showed Alchie Brooks as moving to Jumbo Lisa Bike next year, but that was due to an unfortunate auto-update link with the pro cycling stats. Now if you click his name, it says page not found. It has since been reported on the Vila Flitz website that Bora Hansgrohe are reportedly looking for a 1 million euro buyout for Alchie Brooks, whilst Jumbo Visma are not willing to pay a sum that amounts to more than one year of his salary. Uh, Bora reportedly paid a 3 million euro buyout for Roglic back in October, and I wonder whether that has already been paid in full, or if they could withhold some until this mess is resolved. Either way, we have not heard the end of this story, you can be sure of that. And so for the time being, I'm going to leave the last word to the excellent social media manager of Antomarche Circus Wanty. Statement concerning Kian Alchie Brooks, Antomarche Circus Wanty is waiting to see how things unfold because we have no idea who Kian will ride for in 2024. Now keep your eyes out on globalcyclingnetwork.com for all the latest news on this story and many others. But in the meantime, drop your takes in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to hear what you think on this one. Right, time for some actual racing now. Saturday marked the return of Wout van Aert to cyclocross, and he couldn't have chosen a more stereotypical cyclocross course if he tried. There was mud galore at the exact cross in Essen. And ahead of his return, his coach had downplayed the ambitions of Van Aert this winter, saying he's taking a much different approach to the last few years and that neither of them were expecting him to be winning everything. Well, he can say that all he wants, but this is Wout Van Aert we're talking about, and so everybody else will still be expecting him to win. Which is exactly what he did on Saturday, albeit in front of a weakened field of riders, many skipping the race to travel and focus on Sunday's World Cup round in Italy. Nevertheless, Van Aert put over a minute and a half into second place Jens Adams, who took his first podium of the season, uh, with Taste Art rounding out the podium in third. Uh, Van Aert will now head to a Jumbo Visma training camp, returning to racing at the exact cross in Moll on the 22nd of December. Meanwhile, Mathieu van der Poel is returning to cyclocross earlier than originally planned. Uh, both him and Tom Pidcock will be making their season debuts in Herentau this Saturday, meaning that the only one of the big three not racing in Herentau is the man who lives there, Wout Van Aert. Anyway, back to Essen, and in the women's race, Marion Norber Riberol came out on top in what was a race-long battle with Annick van Alphen. However, a bike change on the last lap for van Alphen allowed Riberol to open up a gap, which was extended to 12 seconds by the finish. The following day in Val de Soleil, two riders won their first ever elite World Cup races. In the women's, Manon Bakker attacked series leader Céline Del Carmen Alvarado on the last lap to take what was, in the end, a convincing victory. Her previous best this season were the fifth place in Dendermonde, but that win has propelled her up to third in the overall standings behind Alvarado and Brandt. 
In the men's, there was an even more convincing win for Joris Neuvenhaus, who's really come of age this season. Uh, Niels van der Putter was matching his pace in the early stages of the race, but it soon became evident that Neuvenhaus was in a class of his own yesterday, eventually crossing the line over a minute clear of van der Putter. Third for Joran Vestura was a career best result for him at that level, while series leader Elisabeth could only manage fifth on the day. Now, that said, with both van der Haar and Ron Haar absent, he did extend his lead in the overall standings. On to what we've got coming up on GCN Plus this week. And as mentioned, it's the X2O Cross in Herentel this Saturday. Definitely a must watch because both Van der Poel and Pidcock are competing, as mentioned before. Then on Sunday, it's the final ever live race on GCN Plus. Uh, the UCI Cycle Cross World Cup from Namur, which as many of you will know, is a legendary course. And so it feels like quite a nice race to finish on. Uh, there are territory restrictions on that though, so please check if it's available where you are. Uh, Pidcock is down for that one, but currently not Mathieu van der Poel. Uh, in terms of other news, well, I'll wrap up with some transfers and changes at Ineos Grenadiers. Their new CEO, who will be overseeing the day-to-day -day running of the team now that Rod Ellingworth has resigned, is John Allett. Uh, Allett has been with the team for the last couple of years as managing director and had worked with Ellingworth previously at Bahrain Victorious, where he also served as MD. There's a new head of performance to replace Ben Williams, Dr. Scott Draw. Uh, so Draw has been director of sport at Millfield School, the largest co-ed boarding school in the UK, since 2018. However, before that, in 2015 and 16, he worked with Team Sky, looking at ways it could utilise its sponsorship of the team for the greater good of other sports in the UK. Uh, Steve Cummings becomes the new director of racing, whilst the team has also recruited the services of the recently retired Emmanuel Aviti as a new sports director. Uh, there's also that change in kit supplier, going from Bioracer to Gobic. Uh, David De La Cruz has finally managed to get himself a contract. He's on his way to Q36.5 after a few years with Astana, whilst Mark Padun is joining Team Corotec Seller Italia, despite having a year of his contract left to run at EF Education Easy Post. Now, as I record this, I don't know the reasons why that contract was stopped early, but I'm sure we'll find out in due course. Uh, meanwhile, Mathieu Bodnar has announced that he'll be retiring at the end of this year after a 14-year pro career. Uh, a couple of World Tour teams have shown us their new kit designs for 2024. This is UA Team Emirates, this is Bahrain Victorious' design, and this is Kian Altibrooks. I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, but we will do our usual hot or not team kits video for 2024 at some point in January when all teams have made them public. And finally, Julien Alaphilippe will start his 2024 season at the Tour Down Under. And the last time and only time he's previously done that race was 10 years before in 2014. That was his first season as a pro and his first with Quickstep. Is it just me that finds it hard to believe that Alaphilippe has always been in the same pro team? Completely forgotten that. Right, that is all for this week's Racing News Show. Let's see what drama unfolds over the next seven days, shall we? I will see you then, but goodbye for now.